Hello friends, today we are going to talk about the tenses. So what are tenses? Tenses is something that tells you about the time when the action has taken place and how do we come to know about the time? Through the verbs. So in a sentence, a meaningful group of words as we have discussed earlier, when we look at the time of the action being done, we talk about the tenses and in this module today we are going to talk about the present tense which means whatever has, is being done now. So let us look at the present tense. So what are we going to learn today? We are going to learn about kinds of present tense, we are going to learn about the present indefinite tense which is simple present tense. We will also talk about the present continuous tense, present perfect tense and present perfect continuous tense. So remember friends, in the topic the present tense we are going to talk about four types of tenses simple present which can also be called as present indefinite tense then we talk about the present continuous tense which can also be named as present progressive tense number three the present perfect tense and number four the present perfect continuous tense and we will also look at the use of the words since and for so let's begin verbs that refer to the present time are said to be in the present tense. So, whatever action is being done today, right now at the time of speaking will all be put under the present tense. For example, Nisha is drinking juice, Ricky reads a comic. So, it is something that Ricky is busy with. So, what we talk about is Ricky reads a comic which means it is something which he is into a habit of doing. They have been work in, working since morning, so something which is being done by them since morning. He has come, so it is about something that has just happened. For example, you all are listening, you all are watching this video. I am talking, these are all examples of the present tense. Let us look at the kinds. The present tense denotes an action in the present time as I have been telling and it is of four kinds, the present indefinite or the simple present tense, the present continuous tense, the present perfect tense and the present perfect continuous tense. Let us begin with the present indefinite or the simple present tense. So this tense is used to indicate when or how often, remember when or how often the action takes place, whether it happens regularly, often or sometimes. It also expresses what goes on at the present moment, but the exact time may not be defined. For example, white lions live in Bengal. I like playing badminton. Rani loves ice cream. Satya never tells a lie. So in these sentences, if you look at the verb live, it is something that is a continuous action and is going on playing, again something which is continuously going on. Loves is something which has become a habit, never tells a lie, again something which is a habit. So a habitual action is also denoted by the present indefinite tense. For example, I study every day at 5 pm, so that is my habit, I will do it every day. The simple present tense is used when we express facts or say something about a person or a thing. For example, the sun rises in the east. Will it change? No. The moon revolves around the earth. So these which are scientific facts like water boils at 100 degree, water freezes at 0 degree are also scientific facts and express something which will never change, hence the present indefinite tense. So the simple present tense is used when we explain a story or the past events in the story in present tense. For example, immediately the Sultan hurries to his capital. It is not that it is being done now, the story is not set in the present time, but we use the present time, present tense to denote the actions that were done then. So it is like time travel that we do here. Gandhi says do or die. So that is Gandhi is gone, but then what he has said is relevant, hence we use the present indefinite tense. To form a sentence in the simple present tense, the root form of the verb is used. So when the subject of the sentence is a pronoun, he, she, it or singular nouns, we have s or es added to the root form. For example, if you look at the structure, subject, verb plus s or es plus the object or the complement. 
So, let us look at the affirmative sentences first. He gets up early in the morning. So, you see how the verb get plus s denotes the singular. The girls in the park. We go to school daily. So, V which is a plural hence the verb go is without a, a s or an es. She drinks milk daily. So, let us look at how to form the negative sentences and to form the negative sentences in the simple present tense what we do is we use the words do not, the short form is do not, we also use the words does not and the short form does not. So, these are added before the verb depending upon the subject. So, how does it go? So, for pronouns which are like I, we, were, they or the plural nouns we add do not. And for pronouns which are like he, she, it and the singular nouns, we use the word does not. Look at the structure here. So, subject plus do or does depending on the number of our subject plus not plus verb plus the object or the complement is how we would make the negative sentences. So, let us look at the examples. She does not laugh. You do not write well. I do not waste his time. He does not drink tea. So, what has happened? If you look at these, she, a singular noun, then does not and laugh. You do not waste. You do not write well. I do not waste his time. So, I, we can always say you do not write well too. He does not drink tea. That also is an acceptable form of the verb. Let us look at forming of the interrogative sentences under the simple present tense. To form the interrogative sentences in the simple present tense, we add the word do and it is added with the pronouns I, you, were, they and the plural nouns and does is added to he, she, it and the singular nouns and what is the structure? Do plus does which act as our question words plus the subject plus the verb plus the object or the Complement. So, how will you try and ask a question in the simple present tense? Do you like tea? Does he come here every day? Does she read a newspaper? Do these boys not play cricket? Do you like to swim? Does he not speak English? So, if you look at these sentences, the interrogatives, does is used, then she, the pronoun, read a newspaper. Do these boys not play cricket? Do you like to swim? Does he not speak English? So, in the interrogative, we also have the affirmative and the negative sentences being used. Let us come on to the present continuous tense, which will denote an action which is being done at the time of talking about it. For example, right now I am talking to you, you are all listening and watching this. So, all these actions which are being done continuously at a given point of time in the present scenario are called as the present continuous tenses. So, the present continuous tense is used to talk about actions or things that are going on or happening at the present time. It is used to express an action going on at the time of speaking as I said right now. For example, you all are watching, you all are listening, I am speaking. So, let us look at the examples here. Boys are playing cricket. I am going to school. Reena is swimming. So, you see the subject plus the uh, B form and then the verb plus ing which we have added to denote it as the present continuous tense. The present continuous tense is also used to talk about things that are planned to be done in the future. So, we also use them for future time reference. For example, the Prime Minister is visiting Washington tomorrow. So, this is something which has already been decided to be done in the future. She is starting dance lessons soon. So, is plus verb plus ing which is used for future time reference. So, to form a sentence in the present continuous tense, we use the auxiliary verb is, am or are according to the subject and then add ing with the verb which is known as the present participle or the gerunds. Remember, we studied about gerunds in the non-finite verbs module. So, what happens here? Subject 
plus is or am or are plus the present participle which is verb plus ing, the object and the complement. When will we use is? When the, so when do we use is? When the subject is singular. When would we use am? When we are talking of I as the subject and are when we are talking of the plural subject. So, let us look at the examples of present continuous tense and the sentences that we are looking at are the affirmative sentences. First one, Manoj is working. I am writing, we are watching a film, she is eating an egg. So, you see how in these sentences we have our subject, we have the auxiliary verb and we have the verb plus ing which is denoting some action which is being done at the time of talking. Look at this one, we because the verb, the subject is a plural, our verb is also are and then we have the main verb plus ing and then the complement or the object. She is eating an egg. Again is because the subject is singular here. So, that is how we make sentences for the present continuous tense. Let us look at the negative sentences. So, to form negative sentences in the present continuous tense, not is added between the auxiliary verb and the verb. Let us see how we do it. So, what is the structure? The subject plus is, am or are plus not plus the present participle plus object or the complement. He is not sleeping. He is not going to office. The boys are not playing. They are not reading the books. So, in these sentences you see how the subject, then our auxiliary verb, then the word not because we are making a negative sentence, then sleeping, sleep plus ing. Look at this one, the boys, the plural subject, then the auxiliary are not and then play plus ing is the structure that we use to denote the present continuous tense in the for the negative sentences. Let us come on to the interrogative sentences for the present perfect continuous tense. So, to form the interrogative sentences in the present continuous tense, the sentence is started with the auxiliary verb which will become your question word and it will be followed by the subject and the present participle form of the verb. For example, is, am, are, these will become our question words plus the subject plus the present participle plus object or the complement. Is father going to the office? Is the car not working properly? Are the boys making a noise? Are you not going, are you not coming with me? So, how do we look at these sentences? So, is our auxiliary verb which has now become the question word then the subject, then our verb plus ing or the present participle and then the object and the question mark because we are talking of an interrogative sentence. And when the subject is plural, we are using the auxiliary are, the boys which is a plural subject making a noise and then the question mark. Let us come to the third type of present tense which is the present perfect tense. So, the present perfect tense indicates completion of an action. So, some action has been completed in the present time and thus connects the past with the present. So, it kind of links. For example, we studied about the present continuous tense just now. It expresses an action that began in the past time and was completed at the present time. So, it started some time and then just finished now. For example, we finished our dinner. She has bought this pen. So, you look at how the structure that we have here is the subject plus the B form of the verb and then finished our dinner. So, we are using the past participle form of the verb here. So, to form a sentence in the present perfect tense, auxiliary verbs like has or have will be used and we use the past participle form of the verb. So, what is the structure for us? Subject plus have plus has plus the past participle plus the object or the complement. Let us look at the affirmative sentences under the present perfect tense. He has completed his work. They have won the match. Pushpa has taken my books. She has gone to Masuri. So, what we look at these sentences is our subject then has because the subject is singular. Then we have the past participle and then the object or the complement. They, plural subject, hence we use have. The 
verb is in our past participle form the third form and then the match so this is how we talk of the action which has just finished before we start something else or before we do something else in present perfect tense let's look at the negative sentences so negative sentences in the present tense will be formed by adding the word not between the auxiliary verb and the past participle they have not completed their task you have not gone to school yet he has not informed me she has not prepared well so what is the structure that we are using so we have the subject plus have or has depending on the number of our subject so if it's plural we use have now what is the structure we use at subject plus has or have so have when we have the subject plural and has when we have the subject singular plus the past participle plus the object or the complement i'll repeat the example here she has not prepared well so subject she has because she is a singular subject plus the past participle and plus the object or the complement let's talk about the interrogative sentences so to form the interrogative sentences in the present continuous tense the sentences started with the auxiliary verb followed by subject and the past participle form of the verb for example is am or are plus subject plus the past participle plus object or complement for example have they not completed their task have you not gone to school yet has he not informed me has she not prepared well so what are we looking at in these sentences we see the use of have as our auxiliary they not to in indicate the negative completed which is the past participle and their task which is the object and then the question mark so this is how we form the interrogative sentences in the present perfect tense let's look at the present perfect continuous tense so the present perfect continuous tense indicates completion of an action in the present time thus connecting the past with the present and it also expresses the action that began in the past and is continuing up to the present time looking at the affirmative sentences here he has been advising her so maybe he started sometime in the past and is still continuing she has been studying since morning so there's a time sense it's something which has been going on in from some time in the past till right now the boys have been weeping for 2 hours so you telling that it has been 2 hours and we've limited the use of time look at how since is so it is like continuous since morning you don't know whether it is still going on or not but when you say 2 hours it kind of con is contained and limited it has been raining cats and dogs so has been plus present participle cats and dogs the idiom which means that it's heavy downpour let's look at the negative sentences so to form negative sentences in the present perfect continuous tense not is added between the auxiliary verb and the verb subject plus have or has again depending on the number of our subject plus not plus present participle plus the object or the complement she has not been replying to my letter so see the subject singular has not the negative sense because we talking of negative sentences the present participle replying to my letters the object or the complement you have because you we count as a plural subject so you have not been going to office for the last 10 days so we've talked about something which is big, which is like today and back past 10 days Let's come on to the interrogative sentences under the present perfect continuous tense. So to form interrogative sentences in the present perfect tense, the sentence is started with auxiliary, so the auxiliary verb will become our question word, followed by the subject and the present participle form of the verb. Have or has again depending on the number plus subject plus present participle plus the object or the complement and what should we not forget is the question mark so has she not been eating for two days has it been raining since morning let's look at the use of since and for so since is used for the point of time which means you saying that something has begun in some point of time maybe and is going on for example 
since 1999, since April, since Monday, since one hour, since maybe last two days. So, you do not know whether it is over or whether it is since still going on. For is used for period of time. So, when you talk of a period of time, we talk of something which began sometime and has finished within a limited or a definite period of time. For example, 2 hours, 2 days, 2 weeks, 5 months, 10 years. So, you see how the difference of since and for comes out. So, since when you have to talk of something that is going on continuously, for when you have to talk of something that started in some point of time and has got over. So, it is like limited time that you denote. So, what have we learnt in this module? We have talked about the present tense and we have talked of the types of present tense. And what are the kinds of present tense? The simple present tense, present continuous tense, present perfect tense and the present perfect continuous tense. Hope you have had fun learning with us. Thank you. To watch the complete video download the Upbind educational app from Play Store and App Store.